The temperature is dropping in large parts of the Northern Hemisphere. And if you own an electric vehicle, whether it's a small, fun, round town runabout or a massive monstrosity of an electric pickup truck, you're more likely to suffer problems with your vehicle's 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery is different to the traction battery pack. The traction battery pack is the, the thing that actually powers your vehicle down the road. The 12 volt battery is used to engage computer systems on the vehicle when you first press the power button and then trigger some relays that allow the main traction battery pack to provide power to the vehicle's 12 volt systems using its DC to DC converter. If your little tiny 12 volt starter battery is unwell, well, your car won't turn on. And we've made plenty of videos on the channel before talking about why this happens and how you can mitigate the risks of being left stranded with a faulty 12 volt battery. The latter is normally fixed by having a small jump battery somewhere about the car or in a bag somewhere with you. Today though, I'm gonna be installing Omu batteries. They are alternatives to 12 volt lead acid starter batteries. I'm going to be installing one lithium battery and one sodium battery in these two vehicles behind us. Now, Omu provided us with these batteries free of charge for us to provide a review. It doesn't get any editorial control over what we think about the products. We've been told we can use them in any which way we want. So here we go. Let's get installing. So here we have both of the batteries I'm going to be putting in these vehicles. The one I'm holding here is a sodium battery. That one is going in the F-150 Lightning and this one is a lithium based battery. It's going in the Chevrolet Bolt with a B. The fact that I can hold these like this shows you that they're pretty lightweight. Although I have been working out in the gym and you can see probably my arms are starting to tire a little bit, but these are much lighter than traditional lead acid batteries. The downside is that they're also more expensive. So this one here retails from just under 300 US dollars. This one here is more expensive because it's a lithium based battery and sodium based batteries are traditionally a little bit cheaper than lithium ones. This one is about $470, which is a bit pricey for a, a, just a standard 12 volt starter battery. And a lot of people look at that and go, why would I bother? And that's something I'm hoping that I can answer over the next year or so of testing. We are putting these in both of our vehicles to test them out, to see if they're actually worth it or not, or if you should just stick with the old fashioned tried and true lead acid battery, which tends to have a shelf life of about three years in an EV. And talking about warranties, I also want to point out that the lithium battery has a four year warranty, whereas this one, the sodium one, only has a three year warranty. Now the company behind these, Omu, has designed these specifically for use in EVs. They also sell batteries for use in range extended EVs like the Chevrolet Volt with a V. And there are some options available also for hybrids, but these are primarily for plug-in vehicles and completely battery electric vehicles as opposed to ICE vehicles. I don't know if you could get away with using these in an ICE vehicle. I don't think you could, uh, but I'm gonna be putting them in an EV, so that's not really my concern. What I can tell you is lithium based battery come with an integrated battery management system that is compatible via Bluetooth with a smartphone app that you can download to interrogate the batteries remotely. So even if you're inside your vehicle, if you're concerned about the state of your 12 volt starter battery, you can actually open the app and it will communicate over Bluetooth with the battery and give you real time data. You can also download profiles that are designed for your particular vehicle. I'm gonna install the Bolt EV battery first and then I will install the one in the F-150 Lightning. And I'm gonna, of course, be following all of the usual safety protocols to make sure I don't hurt myself or damage the vehicle. In the case of the Bolt though, I am going to cheat a little bit because the Bolt's computer system gets a little upset if you disconnect the 12 volt battery and then reconnect it, it can sometimes lead to ghosts in the shell as it were, errors on the computer that eventually go away, but I'd rather not have them. So I'm actually going to use a jump start cable and a jump pack 
to keep the computer in the car happy so it doesn't even know I'm swapping the battery out. Let's get on with it. In order to get the battery out, you're going to need a 13 mil socket, a deep, extra deep one, because this bolt will not fit on a regular socket. And you'll also need an extension arm because you have to get all the way down there. I've already pre-loosened this. So the first part of the battery cam comes off. That is just this bolt right here. Obviously don't drop it inside. I've done that before with other bolts on this car and it wasn't pleasant. This just lifts off and then down the bottom here, right down at the bottom, you can't see it on camera, is a another bolt you have to loosen. If you have big hands like I do, it can be a bit of a pain, but there you go. Now the cables for the battery itself are going to stop me from removing that completely at this point. So let's go ahead and remove both of these. And before I do that, I'm going to cheat and convince the car that it still has power. So to do that, I'm going to attach the negative terminal to the jump start point on the vehicle, which is right here. I'm going to just rest that booster there. I'm going to move this onto here. I'm going to very gently lift this off and out of the way. I'm just going to get uh, Michael to come in and uh, just hold this out of the way, like so. And then I'm going to undo this one. To remove this metal piece here, I'm going to have to come down here and lift up this metal piece here without contacting the battery and then move it to one side. And then the battery should just lift out. There we go. Now this is heavy, so I'm gonna try not and drop it. Next up, let's put the new battery in. So this should just fit into the space that the old battery had. Before we do anything else, I'm going to actually put this clamp back in, like so. And before I reattach the battery terminals, I'm actually going to put this bolt back in. At least I'm going to start it off. Obviously, if you're replacing a, a regular 12 volt battery with another 12 volt battery, you can use this procedure if you want. Snug. That's good. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to pull off these caps here. We've got the positive one and we've got the negative one. I'm going to put the negative one on first. Like so. Now, some people say you should be putting some, some electrical dielectric grease on here to help with corrosion. I'm not going to do that. I've never had to do that on batteries. Um, I know some people will be upset about that, but I've never had to do it before, so I don't think I'm going to start, certainly not on this vehicle today. Next, I'm going to attach this one, see if I can do this without removing the 12 volt battery. And there we go. Let's turn that off. Let's snug this down. This is gonna go down like so. That goes like that. And then we just put this plate on. I'm not entirely sure what this plate is for. Um, just seems to be there to, to hold something or at least prevent something. Maybe it's a protection uh, from, from an accident impact. Whatever the reason for its existence, uh, Let's put it back the way we found it. Okay, the installation is complete for the bolt. I have the Omu app here. It, uh, it is showing that the battery is charging. It's currently going through a balancing phase. It tells me that the temperature of the battery is 18.9 degrees Celsius. 
It's on its first cycle count. The voltage is 14.76 volts right now. It's putting about 80 amps in. This battery has been in storage for a while. They do say that you need to charge them every six months or so. I haven't had this battery for six months, so I don't need to worry about it. But if it is in storage for longer than that, you do need to charge it. It tells me of the four cells in this battery, there is a difference between the cells of 0.0. .0 zero eight volts which is negligible we don't need to worry about that the total voltage of the battery is 14.75 volts the average voltage of the cells is 3.68 volts not too highly charged not too low everything is good i'm just going to leave this this car on for a while just to let that battery sort itself out the temperature of the battery is going up but also importantly the the car didn't show any error messages because of that little trick I did. I don't need to worry about that with the truck, but for the Bolt, it allowed me to put a new battery in without losing any of my settings of the vehicle, without upsetting anything. And all so far, so good. It seems to be doing fine. It hasn't got any errors. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it over the next couple of days and make sure it's happy. So every time I get in my car, I'll just fire up this and see what's what. Now let's do Ortegas's 12 volt starter battery. For those who don't know, it's hidden behind this panel. So I'm gonna be jumping in there in a second because I can't reach it. And I'll be taking it out and then I'll be unbolting it and removing the battery because this doesn't have the same problem as the bolt when you disconnect the 12 volt battery it doesn't throw a whole load of errors I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect the battery and then reconnect it all right so to remove this you just kind of have to pull up and then pull out and I always worry about breaking the clips but apparently I didn't this time I always find this little Easter egg wonderful. It's a little electric Ford with a date 1913 on it, but it tells you, uh, make sure you read the manual, warning, there's a 12 volt battery behind there. Getting to the battery in this is, is a bit of a pain, uh, but you need an eight millimeter socket to undo the battery clamp. So I'm just gonna do that now. I'm actually gonna use my extension, which is conveniently in my pocket. There we go. You'll notice it's really dirty inside the battery compartment here. I mean, it's, it is a truck. Uh, this is open to the elements and we have lots of dust roads around these parts and this truck does get driven on them. So there we go. Some people recommend that you use power tools to get these off, but by the time you've got your battery into your power driver or your drill or whatever, you could have just done it manually with a with a with a hand tool so you can see it gets kind of dirty in there but that's fine next we're going to disconnect the battery itself so there's going to be uh, one bolt we undo there and then one on this side i believe these are 10 millimeter yep so let's go ahead and disconnect the positive first and then we'll do the negative there goes the positive I'll just put that back in its little container here for a second and then we'll do the negative Obviously, if you're doing this, you should really use tools with insulated handles because you don't want to short out anything. Uh, that's the other benefit of using a socket rather than a, an old fashioned spanner wrench, whatever you want to call it. All right, let us move this battery out of the way. All right, this battery is so much lighter and easier to put in. Reminder that this is the sodium one. Let's pop this in place like that. And then well, let's go ahead and just connect all of these back up. I'm actually going to connect them before I tighten them. There might be a little bit of a spark here. There we go. You just heard the truck lights come on and everything else come on. So that's good because it means that everything is working as it should. Let's go ahead and tighten these up. 
And finally, let's put this little clamp back on. Now it went in like so to grab the bottom of the battery. Again, I'm going to try not to over tighten this because I don't want to A, make it impossible to, to disconnect, but also I want to make sure that that is firm and secure, but doesn't damage the vehicle. And I'm going to keep this battery, we're going to keep this battery and we're going to regularly charge it to make sure we have a backup battery in case one of these fails, because that's the last thing we want to have happen. Um, but this is only a, a tiny little battery. It's 35 amps. Uh, 35 amp hours and 380 cold cranking amps, which you don't need to worry about cold cranking amps when you're working with an EV battery, but I'm going to put these caps on just to make sure it stays electrically safe. Michael did comment that this has ballooned slightly. There's kind of a Boeing in this 12 volt battery pack and like all things Boeing right now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything good is about to happen. Anyway, let me know if you have replaced your 12 volt battery with something uh, with more modern chemistry and more lightweight. The company Omu says that obviously in improving the lightness of your battery helps improve your range. I think that's a bit of a gimmick personally. I don't see how taking the tiny little bit of weight that these have away from the vehicle is going to dramatically improve your efficiency. That shouldn't be the reason that you upgrade, unless you are a race car driver, in which case you probably have other ways that you want to lighten your vehicle first. Anyway, I hope that the rest of your day is a good one and I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got some thoughts, make sure you leave them in our Discord chat room, our Patreon page, or you can reach out to us on the Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers that you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just over $10 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters. Alan Brim, Jim, Sarah Horlock, full name, Todd Johnson, Roderick, Stuart De Spain, Rupert Ronson, Larry Phoenix, Dala, Wendy Kelly Buddenbaum, and Kay. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your moment of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one off donation, you'll also find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have a good old fashioned P.O. box you can reach us at, address also linked below. And of course, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. We've also got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!